Welcome to Encounter Shawnee Mission. I'm Jonathan Wilson. And I'm Marlia Campbell. Reading isn't a thing of the past at Comanche Elementary. Here's Brandon and Skyler with the Scholastic Book Fair. This is Brandon Baudry for Encounter Shawnee Mission at Comanche Elementary School here for their biannual Scholastic Book Fair. Let's take a look. PTA um, takes a little bit to help pay for our events and activities that PTA um, supports. Um, and we also give the rest of it to the librarian so she can also fill up her bookshelves with some newer, funner books. The book fair is an event for kids and families to come to the school to support their school and get some educational, fun things to read and do. Well, my favorite part about the book fair is looking at all the interesting books in there. The benefit of book fair for this school, like many elementary schools, is to give students an opportunity to purchase and look at books that they might not be able to have the opportunity to look at normally. Especially in our community, um, our community is pretty close knit and it does have a, many economically disadvantaged families, so bringing it to them is a big advantage. Mr. Lowe said his favorite part of the book fair was probably seeing the kids face when it when it's all set up they really get into it and they see all the um, uh, stories and books that they can buy um, it for them it's almost like Christmas while it may be a group effort there is one important part of the book fair and the parents do all of it. our PTA puts this whole thing on now Scholastic obviously delivers all the cases of books but if it wasn't for our parents this wouldn't happen so parents set up run it tear down, and then also provide our faculty with um, books from the book fair. When asked about what his favorite book is, Mr. Lowe had this to say. Oh, gosh. There's too many. Probably any Newbery award-winning book would be right on my list. While the Scholastic Book Fair comes to a close at Comanche Elementary School, this has been Brandon Baudry for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Horizons High School sent forth this great nation a really good teacher. Here's Tori Thomas with the story. A teacher at Horizons recently received the opportunity of a lifetime, a trip to Washington, D.C. This summer I went to Washington, D.C. for a week-long professional development program that was all paid for, all expenses paid. The program in D.C. was meant for social studies teachers, grades 9 through 12, to come and learn about civil and economic liberty and how we can do better at teaching that in our classes um, when we talk about the founding documents, the Declaration of Independence. I applied for the program so that I could enhance my learning and I think what put me ahead of other applicants was the fact that I had created a constitution club here at Horizons last year where I brought students in and we talked about current events that deal with everyday issues with the Bill of Rights, freedom of speech, unreasonable search and seizure, the right to privacy, and I think that put my application above some others just because I had piloted that program and now there are constitution clubs all over the United States in schools, so instead of people coming in and talking to the students, it's teachers bringing the information to the students. In a, in a unique way. Going to DC was great to enhance my learning of the founding documents. Uh, we visited some places like Mount Vernon, uh, the National Archives, and I've used some of that information in my classes, um, kind of like a virtual field trip, I guess, because I can't literally take the students to the archives, but it's online, uh, Mount Vernon, there's things online. Um, and I just really, what I wanted from this was to show the students that the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence is still relevant in our lives even though it was written over 200 years ago. Um, so you know we look at Supreme Court cases, current events, and, and it really does affect their everyday life even if they don't realize it. With photographer Elena Blakely, this has been Tori Thomas reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Ever heard of the famous Hollywood Wax Museum? Yeah, is that what we're seeing next? Nope, even better. Pawnee and East Antioch put on wax museums of their own. Our fifth graders have spent actually two months or so researching an American hero and discovering what makes them noble, brave, and a leader. 
and they write an essay, and they write a bio poem, of course after doing the research. Then they type the whole thing, proofreading it. Uh, it's a good bit of their social studies grade, also language arts and even reading, so that's how we evaluate them on that. And two of our culminating activities, today is the Wax Museum where they dress up like their hero and they've memorized a short speech and uh, visitors go around and push a little button on their hand to make them come to life and they tell about their American hero. The Wax Museum is something that you have to do in social studies where you have to write an essay and a speech and then you say it in front of a lot of people. LeBron James and he's a hero because he helped a lot of people. He helped with the Haitian earthquake and a lot of that. You can just pick a hero, a random person that that you think is a hero, and then because you have to research him and stuff. With photographer Anna Carlin, this has been Jonathan Scholl reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Family and friends gathered at East Antioch Elementary School for the annual fifth grade wax museum. Students dressed up as their American hero and told their story. We begin the process um, usually at the beginning of second quarter and the students write an essay. Um, they begin with the brainstorming and then we go through all the writing process, all the writing steps. Um, it usually takes quite a, quite a few months until um, the end of second quarter and then in January we begin writing their speech for the Wax Museum. The students, they practice their um, public speaking skills during the Wax Museum, plus they are able to um, practice the research skills when writing the reports. They, the fifth graders at East Antioch do a great job with their hero essays and the Wax Museum. In order to hear the report, friends and family pressed a button on the student's hand to bring their wax figure to life. I actually really like Sacagawea because she was a brave and hard-working woman. She got married when she was 16 to a 50-year-old man, um, and she was captured by the, the style warriors, and that's how she got her name, Sacagawea. Well, we did a lot of book research, but we did uh, one day we did web research. With photographer Seth Pacina, this has been Kelsey Eisenberger reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Rising Star students got a chance to learn about animals they can find in nearby parks. Sounds like fun. Let's check it out. The program they're doing now is called Kids and Critters, and it's basically getting kids to uh, just getting a chance to see different types of animals, you know, reptiles, um, and just reptiles, mammals, and and just see the difference, differences awesome. between each That's animal and, uh, you know, my job. just to show that they're not a, you know, show them Step it's the nothing to be afraid of. You're going to soar way back down. They use their shell for protection. Now I'm going to come around and everybody can touch the shell just to see how hard it is. The funnest part is seeing words? the enjoyment the kids get from Generally, it. You know, you could see, girls, you know, we could, we could just bring the animals in and disappear and they, you know, it, I mean, it's all about the animals. When the kids see them, you know, they light up. It makes their day. You know, they go home, tell everybody about, you know, what they saw today. Kids and critters provided the students with a valuable lesson about wildlife. It's really good for kids to understand that a lot of animals that you find out there, you know, they're nothing to be afraid of. You know, we do another program with snakes and, uh, and spiders and, and things. And usually when you Just see a spider or snake out in the wild, you either want to stomp on it or, or run away. But... For the most part, most of the animals that you'll find are, are really just, more, you know, really afraid of you. And it just teaches the kids to have a, a bigger respect for these animals and to keep their distance and appreciate the animals. With photographer Marcus Dilley, this has been Logan Tritt reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. After this performance, you won't be in Kansas anymore. Let's check out Shawnee Mission West's rendition of The Wizard of Oz. Shawnee Mission West has recently held their musical production of The Wizard of Oz. I would choose Wizard of Oz because it's a, it's, it's a fun musical, it's a good musical, it's a musical that I think is uh, well received, especially in Kansas. Well, every year we look at the talent of our students that we have returning and we always try to find a show that's going to showcase the talent that our kids have. If we've got a lot of great uh, dancers, we look for a show that's heavy in dance. If we have some really great singers, we look for a show that maybe is 
more demanding vocally. If we've got some great actors, maybe a show that has a bit more story to it. Um, so we just want to showcase the talent of our kids. Well, we'd practice every single day after school, starting about uh, 2.50 to 3 o'clock, and we'd go until, um, in the first month, we'd go until probably about 4.30, then we start adding it a little bit longer. About three weeks out before the show, we go full from three till six. With long rehearsals, you might think Mr. Rife had no worries, but... Well, it is the two cardinal rules of theater. Don't work with animals and don't work with children. But I think overall our experience was very good. It was fun. Um, the young uh, kids were great to work with. Uh, Mr. Schnackenberg over at Rising Star did a fantastic job getting them ready. So when they got here with us, uh, it was a seamless transition. They just worked with us on the stage and they were ready to go. They were real excited. And um, the Fangman family brought in their dog, Shadow, to be Toto, and, and they were great to be here with us and, and really help him. He's a, a great dog, fun to work with. Well, I think it was a big success. I think people really enjoyed it, and I think our kids had a lot of fun putting it on. With photographer Garrison Coker, this has been Bailey Erickson reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Care to join me for some fine dining? I'd love to, but where are we going? How about Sunflower Elementary? Fine dining is a special thing that we did for the kids where um, they, they have this green cash they get during lunch. And so teachers volunteer to decorate a table once a month. And this month it's Carla Lindsay from first grade and she's decorating a table and putting out a little treat for all those kids who did great. It's active learning, being safe and caring. And if they can demonstrate those three traits um, anywhere in the school building, they get cash. In the lunchroom, they get a special cash that goes into a special drawing. And when, if they get their name drawn out, they sit at a table, a special table with um, you know, a tablecloth and a little treat, and they get to eat lunch um, with some volunteers. It's, it's fun. The teachers wanted to do something special for kids um, who were really going above and beyond, who were doing a great job in the lunchroom with those three things, the act of learning, being safe, and caring. The volunteers came from Lenexa United Methodist, and they've been really great because they come in and two people from that church come in once a month to sit at the fine dining table with our kids and just get to know them and visit with them during lunch. I think it's neat. Kids understand that it's special, and when um, they walk by, they were all very excited to see that there's something different going on in the lunchroom. With photographers Emily Bider, Catherine Brown, and Katie Miller, this has been Emma Santee reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. They were really clowning around over at Overland Park Elementary the other day. They sure were. Here's a look at Richard Brenner as he entertains children as a vaudeville clown. Students at Overland Park Elementary School got to attend a silent clown show on December 24th, put on by the vaudeville clown, also known as Richard Brenner. My favorite part about the assembly is um, uh, going up on stage and helping the clown, being silly and stuff. I liked it because um, he did he did lots of fu uh, funny stuff and um, and he, he like he kept forgetting his hat. <laughs> My favorite part of the assembly was um, that I got to get um, I got called up and I got to do um, the little banging thing. I've been doing this for 30 years. How I got started, I was in theater at KU. I was an actor. And uh, six years of college got me where I am today. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually learned how to juggle in a class. And uh, out of all the things I learned in college, it was like the most exciting thing I ever learned. And from there, I figured out I could learn how to ride a unicycle and do hat tricks and things like that. And I went off to other workshops and schools after college that taught movement and theater and circus arts and stuff like that. And that was back in 1983, so it's been a while. With photographer Cooper Arner, this has been Alex Elliott reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Western students learn more about each other on a day of discovery. Let's check out Diversity Day. It started with the social studies classes doing like the family roots and they would find out where they were from and all of that. And being a math teacher, I heard them talk about that, and I thought, oh, that's an idea that we could capitalize on. It started off with parents coming in, sharing, and parents would, would bring in uh, souvenirs of, in terms of their culture, and they would have their um, costumes on, for lack of a better word. And we also asked the choir to get involved, and the band, the jazz band. 
And so they play traditional songs that would be uprooted from some type of struggle and stuff that the kids can identify with and stuff. So it's just, it's just full of let me know who you are and I'll let you know who I am. It's just wonderful. And then we came on board with uh, the drama department and we always featured a play for the kids. And you know, in terms of this techno world, it's very good that the kids can actually see and, and uh, experience it live through a play. And uh, so that's what we did. And we always had managed to connect the kids with that later. You know, our goal, of course, is academics because we're here. But this is one day in which we can stop and say, hey, I noticed that you're here, and that's important. Um, during Diversity Day, we mainly went to West to go watch The Wizard of Oz. We came back, then talked about how our cult cultures and ethnicities are so different. And then now we either, if you're not in the play, get to eat food and watch a play, or if you're in the play, watch the, well, perform and everything. My favorite part of Diversity Day is performing the play itself because it allows me to get up there and show people who I really am instead of just like that random kid in the hallway. We watched a slideshow talking about how different like people are affected by other people's lives. We also got to see different posters that were made by the students showing their form of diversity. Afterwards we took a little survey um, describing like our lives. And then in the following hour, we got to see a choir and um, jazz band concert. With photographer Sam Urschel, this has been Lucas Layden reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. B, E, E. What are you doing? Practicing for the spelling bee. Apache had theirs, and the competition looks pretty tough. Here's the Apache spelling bee. Let's see what Jonathan's up against. Students at Apache participated in a school-wide spelling bee. Prepared way more than last year, I would say. I was expecting that I would do pretty well. I am very excited for the district spelling bee. I just don't know what to expect. We got an official list from the National Spelling Bee because that's usually the words they used for the school spelling bees. I learned exactly 463 words. Uh, the most exciting thing about being a sponsor is working with the kids and getting them ready for the, for the tournament or the, the, the challenge of being the spelling bee. Okay, this is just fourth through sixth grade. So every fourth grade class, fifth grade class, sixth grade class had their own classroom spelling bee. And these students were the winners or the second place winners of their class. So they were representing their class. I think there's over 80 uh, school uh, students represented at the Johnson County Spelling Bee, and eight of those finalists will be the ones that go on to the Sunflower Stake. Preparation for the bee started just a few months ago. Well, it started back um, the beginning of, let's say the end of December when the st students started their classroom spelling bees, and so they practiced for those. Then they were given a practice list to, to study for the school spelling bee. So. All in all, a couple of weeks. But the kids, it's up to them on how much they decide to, to work and study for the, how much time they decide to put into it. So Eli now will go to the Johnson County Spelling Bee. It's on February 1st, and it will be held in DeSoto. After that, if he happens to go on to the Sunflower State Spelling Bee, that will be on March 8th, and it's at Fort Hayes State University. In a movie, I N E. B I T A B L E inevitable. That is correct. With photographer Jack Arndt, this has been Scott Rambo reporting for Encounter Shiny Mission. Thank you for tuning in to another Encounter Shiny Mission. Once again, I'm Jonathan Wilson. And I'm Marlia Campbell. See, See you, you next time. time.